Hey everyone, this is Luminous coming you guys with a new series. This new series is called the Learning with Lumi. And Learning with Lumi is a series dedicated towards newer players starting out in Dota or Dota 2. And basically in each episode of the Learning with Lumi, uh, we're going to take a look at one hero. And we're going to talk about the skill build of that hero. We're going to talk about the item build of that hero. How you should play the hero correctly. What your positioning is. What's your mindset. Just a very concentrated guide, I suppose, for one particular hero. And our hero today is going to be Lich. He is being played by X Bad Boy X. And uh, Bad Boy is actually my friend. And uh, I just basically took one of his replays. And I decided to comment over it. Uh, the, Lumi of Siri the, the Learning with Lumi series excuse me, is... Uh, I plan to have it based on user submission. So basically, you can submit your own replay to me, and I will basically kind of dissect it, you know, talk about what you did wrong, what you need to work on, and uh, what are the many things that you did correctly as well. So, And also, um, yeah, if you want to submit your replay to me, uh, check out the end of this video. I'll have a little bit more information towards that. So we're looking at the Lich today, and let's talk about some of the basic things about the Lich. He's a 600 range nuker intelligence hero. Um, he has very weak HP gain, has very weak stat gain in general, but to make up for it, it has very decent um, decent attack animation, decent nuking, decent movement speed. So he does have his weakness, but he does have his strength as well. So we're going to be using the player perspective camera where we're going to be setting the fog to dire. So basically this allows, to, allows us to see exactly what he sees, and I, I'm actually not going to... Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna take my my mouse off the screen, and we we're gonna see exactly what bad boy is seeing here. And you can see that he's already selecting his guild. And let's talk about the skill build first. The skill that he has selected right now is called Sacrifice or Dark Ritual. If you're from Dota One, and that skill basically allows you to deny one of your friendly creeps and gain a little bit of mana in return as well. And that might sound like a very basic skill, but this is probably one of the best laning skill in the game. And this is what makes Lich one of the best heroes in the game. Um, Dark Ritual allow you to go into a very difficult lane, like this one, you can see that uh, they are in the dire long lane, so they're really far away from the tower right now. They're easily ganked, you can see the trees from the left and right, they can swing around and gank these guys. But what Sacrifice allow you to do is deny the creeps, and because they have more creeps than yours, they will do, do do more damage to your creeps. They will kill your creeps faster, basically. And as they're killing your creeps faster, they are going to be pushing towards your tower. So basically, you have physically changed a laning disadvantage to a laning advantage. Normally, again, you are very far from your tower in this lane, but as you deny more and more creeps, you're closer to your tower. So that's one of the first big benefit of Dark Ritual, or Sacrifice in this case here. You can see that after this wait, yeah, they're going to be right under the tower, and they're going to be safe now. Well, safer, not safe. They're going to be safer with the tower protecting them. So they're uh, in a smaller chance to die, and also on the enemy side, they're going to be in a higher chance of getting ganked. So that's always a good thing. That's just one of the good things of Sacrifice. The second good thing about Sacrifice is, well, when you're denying creeps, they're not getting that experience. And sooner or later, you're going to out-level them. Um, it's, it's, not, it's actually quite common that you're going to be ahead in terms of a level, half a level, maybe even a level and a half, maybe even two levels if you're denying well. Simply because of Sacrifice allow you to have the ability to keep denying creeps. And the cooldown is 35 seconds at level 1. So you could basically use deny one creep each and every wave. Just think about it. After after 5 minutes, you're denying at least 2.5 wave. Completely denying it. And that's the EXP and gold that the enemy team will never get back. So that's that's why Lich is one of the most powerful laners. But not only that. Not only does Stark Ritual allow you to deny creeps. But also gives you a mana in return. And you can see that, well, he has a pretty decent nuke. It's called Frost Nova, I believe. Or maybe they changed the name of it. It's called Frost Blast in Dota 2. And yeah, it does have a fairly high mana cost. And that's something that you do have to be careful about. But Dark Ritual allows you to do this right now. He's Dark Ritualing to get some mana back. And then he's Frost Blasting to, you know, nuke the enemy team. And that's, you know, in essence, you're basically denying the enemy EXP. You're harassing their hit point, you're gaining the physical lane advantage by being closer to your tower, and it's non-stop. It's basically non-stop. As long as Lich stays alive, he will keep doing this, and it really, really hurts the enemy team. Right now, you can see the enemy team is actually doing a fairly good job in terms of harassing our carry, which is our anti-mage in the lane. He's having a tough time farming. He's been using a lot of clarity and resortives and, and salves, but he's still at a low amount of HP. So really good job by the Radiant team in terms of harassing uh, our anti-mage down. But 
Bad boys, you can fairly do, he's doing his job, he's basically doing his job right now. Um, let's talk about his uh, item build, starting item build a bit. And this is probably the best item build that you can start out for Lich. He started out with a chicken as a support, uh, it's not. It's a pretty good idea to buy a chicken for your team, as long as you know your team already doesn't have one. And uh, looks like he's going to give a salve, yeah he is going to give a salve to his anti base. so really good support play from uh, bad My boys thanks. here. Now he started with four GG branch, a south, and uh, a pair, a set of tangles. And I, normally I would actually agree with this uh, choice, given that the uh, Lich has dark ritual or sacrifice. I keep, I'm gonna use it interchangeably uh, in this uh, video, so hope you guys don't mind. Um, having the dark ritual give you some really good mana regeneration, so you don't need a clarity pot uh, as most other support hero would need to keep up their harassment. But actually, in just a little bit of personal preference, I would pick up a single clarity. I would ch trade a GG branch here for a single clarity. Just a little bit of personal preference. Because, um, you know, if you look at the uh, Nova, it does actually take quite a bit of mana, 125, just a level 1. It's actually going to go up to 190 at level 4. So it, it's a huge mana intensive spell. And, uh, well, having extra clarity, again, personal preference here isn't a bad idea. You can see Anti-Mage is basically out of restorative at this point. Lich also out of restorative because he just gave it all to the Anti-Mage and Anti-Mage unfortunately has to go back. But the thing about Lich is because of his Dark Ritual ability, he actually is a very very strong solos. A lot of times in professional game he solos the long lane, which is the bottom lane here for the Dire team. He could solo mid fairly decently as well. So you see Pudge got a gank off. And I want to point this out here. Um, <laughs> Shows bad boys wasn't really looking at the map because Pudge, if you were paying attention on the mini map, he was ganking and he got the first blood. Another hook misses here, and I think this is going to be a recurring theme for bad boys in this game. He often I I've noticed that he has trouble in terms of keeping up with his mana pool, and Lich will have that trouble throughout the game because again he has really really costly spells. Um, yep, as we see a good hook here by the Pudge, but looks like the Weaver gonna make it out alive. But still a very good gank by the Pudge. That's gonna allow Anti Mage to go back in lane a little bit. But anyways, uh, Lich has very costly nukes as we see this Weaver trying to get the kill. He is going to get the kill on the end of the He's going to get nuked down though. Are we going to have a hook for the kill though? Pudge, oh, missing the hook. He's very, very low. A couple more right hits is going to do the job. And I think he is going to salve up. Lich is going to still give chase. I don't think that's a good idea because, well, he, he can't get enough another nuke. But uh, he, we will see the clearing up of, of the Weaver. Weaver does have the mana, so there's really no chance that our Lich is going to grab the kill. So Lich is going to turn back. He's very low in health now, so he has to play passively in the lane as well. Ancient Apparition coming around, trying to get a nuke off against the Lich. Now, um... I was talking about the mana problem. Oh, as we see, Storms are zipsing right now. I think Bad Boys is going to go down. Yeah, so a poorly patched chase by Bad Boys. Um, he... It was really close. He might have got the kill if the if the Weaver was not quick enough to uh, to use his clarity pot. But good job by the Weaver, and uh, our Lich died. Let's go. Let's go back to our Lich build skill build. If you were paying attention to him right now, he actually skilled Dark Ritual at level three or Sacrifice at level three before his skills nuke. 99% of the time in Dota, you want to max your nuke as soon as possible. And the reason that he chose to actually skill Sacrifice over the nuking spell is how good Sacrifice is. As soon as you level up Sacrifice, it's going to lower the cooldown of your spell by 5 seconds. And also it's going to give you extra, a little bit of extra mana as you level up. And that, that shows that bad boys want to prioritize on denying over nuking. Which again, it's not a bad way to go about it because because how good sacrifice is. You keep denying the creeps, you get you you lower the exp more, uh, you lower the gold more, and again you you still get the tower protection. So it's not a bad way to to level uh, sacrifice at level three. We sometimes even see pro players really level sacrifice at level five. And, and, and keep leveling it. Uh, but in most cases, you could just level up Sacrifice at 3, and then at level 4 and 5, you go back to that Frost Blast, as exactly as we see Bad Boys here does. Um, he, he went, Basically, his skill build in this game is Sacrifice at 1 and 3, and then Frost Blast at 2, 4, and 5. And that's probably one of the better way to go about it, but it's not the only way. It, it changes from game to game. Now, you might be thinking, well, what is his second spell? Why haven't he leveled it right now? The second spell is called Frost Armor and allows you to put up an armor on yourself or on your teammates, on your creeps, whoever. And basically what that allows you to do is give that hero a little bit of extra armor. But not only that, when they're attacking, when they're a melee enemy and they're attacking uh, whoever got that buff, uh, they will be slowed down. Uh, it's a 30% movement speed slow. And I 
think a 20% uh, attack speed slow. So fairly decent amount of slowing if they choose to uh, attack him. Uh, but unfortunately, that spell is not that good at this outside of the in this stage of the game in the early stage of the game it's all about nuking it's all about spell damage and g getting a little bit of uh, physical survivability is great but it's a lot better to actually get your other spells such as your nuke such as dark ritual and uh, you can see a lich has so many good spells so you have to really prioritize what do you need best in this situation in this situation it's not a bad idea to you know get nukes and dark ritual now of course there's always uh you know Exceptions to the rules. There are some rare cases you actually want to pick up a single level of frost armor. Let's say if you got up against a couple of melee heroes in your lane, if they do a lot of physical damage, it might not be a bad idea to actually. As we see a little bit of engagement up here, Weaver comes in right and nicely done. He basically went in with really low HP and says, "Well, I'm I'm going to be dying to a single chain frost," and he really baited the the lich to stay around to get that kill. Unfortunately, AA came around with the Kofi. A good time lapse when Weaver brought him back, and uh, our Lich player got a little bit baited, and he fell down. So, uh, as I was saying earlier, it's sometimes very rarely though you can actually pick up a single level of frost armor, and it's going to be invaluable, especially when you're up against many melee heroes. But that's not the case in the bottom lane, so that's why he hasn't picked up a single level of spells yet. And now, if you look at the spell cost of our, our spells, 170 for that frost nova, 200 at uh, for the chain frost, his ultimate ability. And uh, you will see what his ultimate ability does. It basically bounces around nuke like crazy. Uh, uh, well, a picture or a video is uh, better than my words. You guys will see exactly what it does. But one way I want to point out about, about his uh, mana cost is that right off the bat, you have to reserve 370 mana to cast all your spells. And if you look at his mana pool, after one nuke, he already does not have enough for it. So he, you know, you got to be really, really careful about your mana. Yeah, he, now he does not even have mana for his ultimate anymore. So even though you have Dark Ritual to restore mana, uh, you got to keep constantly keep your mana pool high enough to at least get off a single Nova and a single Chain Frost because you never know when a fight breaks out. So mana conservation and mana management for a hero, even with sacrifice as his ability, is very, very important. And now that you can see that he's picking, he has 500 gold, so he can have the boots of speed. I'll, I'll talk about item builds as the game progresses. As we see a teleportation coming in, that is going to be the Pudge. They're looking for a gank. And right now, we have enough. Ooh, hook misses, and that's going to be the end. Right now, we do have enough mana to use both of the spells. And, and again, I'm, I'm going to keep pointing out, you, having mana on Lich is, is so important. Because guess what? Without mana on this hero, he's basically a big... Uh, Big range creep. He actually doesn't do anything. So right now they're still getting, trying to get a kill on that Weaver. It's gonna be tough. Let's see if Pudge's gonna land the hook. Our, our our friend here is not looking. Oh, Pudge still looking. Not gonna get it. Now he does have a 680 gold here. I would actually dodge into the shop and pick up a TP scroll and also a boots of speed. And the reason that TP scroll is such an important item overall, it, it's just a good item in, in many situations, but more importantly, it's a strong item on Lich because of Lich's Chain Frost. Lich's Chain Frost is a really strong spell if only aimed towards hero. It basically bounces around like crazy, and uh, it basically bounces around randomly. And if there's only two enemy heroes nearby, um, it's gonna bounce only on those two enemy heroes. Now, a lot of times in early games, your your other lanes will get dived upon. Basically, two or three heroes, uh, you know, they jump on one of your heroes, and then they you know they run past your tower and they kill them really really rapidly. If you teleport in right in that instance when they're jumping on your hero, you jump in with a chain frost, and it's going to do so much damage. You might actually net yourself a double kill with a single teleport scroll. Uh, so I think it's this is a mistake here, bad boys. He picked up a magic stick, which is not bad, but I think having a teleport scroll and the ability to counter gank, you saw. If you're watching the the mini, if you're actually watching the mini map and, and watching the game, you can see that there was a lot of fighting going on, on the other side of the map. And the fact that the Lich had a chain frost up, he would have been able to teleport to the other side of lane and just grab himself very easy kills. Yes, he would have left a Weaver here farming and laning, but that's okay. I think if you're killing two or three heroes on the other side of the map and then also protecting your heroes uh, by saving them, I think that's a, a, a good exchange. So. I think I think bad boys is making a little bit of bad play here, and also you might be thinking, well, why is actually 
Lich just staying on the bottom lane? Isn't he a support hero? Why is he taking so much laning XP? Well, I think the reason he's doing so is because, well, the anti-mage is not in lane, as we see Pudge still waiting for the gank. Yeah, they're definitely waiting for the gank. The hook is gonna be right there. Perfect hook here from STWY. So, shout out to him. Got himself a kill. Weaver, normally a very difficult hero to kill, but nicely done for uh, Pudge grabbing that one. Also, again, you can see that there's two or three here on the mini-map on the mid lane. And again, if Lich has to teleport Skrull, he could jump in if a fight breaks out. But right now, if a fight breaks out, well, Lich is going to be farming on the bot lane. Uh, you can see that Lich is also doing a lot of time. He's um, he's using his Frost Blast to actually uh, nuke the creeps, which is okay if you have a lot of mana. But right now, again, you got to be fairly careful in terms of mana. After one nuke and one ultimate, he is going to be out of mana. So, Hook Oak is in right now for the... Ooh, 40 Viper, Viper barely lived, and there's gonna be Nova and Chain Frost. Where's the Chain Frost? There's the Chain Frost. One drop, and you can see that it basically bounces around randomly, and really lucky bounces for bad boys, uh, bouncing on the hero repeatedly. If I have used that Chain Frost, it probably would just bounce on the creeps, and that basically gives the unpredictability of Lich, and that makes sometimes make him really, really strong, and also at times makes him really, really weak, because uh, depending how your Chain Frost bounces, um, he, he's you know. You could get a really strong ultimate, or you could get an ultimate that only hurts creep. So, and right now at level eight here and level eight and nine, you can see that bad boys is starting to take frost armor. And you might be wondering, well, why don't you actually max sacrifice? Well, sacrifice, like I said, one of the most broken laning spell. And since at level eight or nine, you know, 15 minutes in the game, you're probably gonna start exiting the lane. You're probably gonna start roaming around a little bit as a support. You're gonna probably start assisting your teams in terms of ganking. So there's really no more reason to actually start leveling a sacrifice. I mean, leveling sacrifice is still good. It gives you that uh, more mana to work with, which is never a bad thing. But at this point of the game, you might want to start working at worrying a little bit. Ooh, nice deny here by bad boys in that deny. Um, so yeah, in this stage of the game, physical damage starts to become a small issue. Uh, it's going to become a bigger and bigger issue as the game progresses. And also, as a as a support hero such as Lich, and as how bad boys is playing it, he's playing it sort of like a support hero. He's not going to get too many levels as the game progresses. He's going to be starting roaming around here. You can see his journey from the mid lane to the bottom, and now he's going back back to the uh, back to the uh, mid lane again. He's going to be doing a lot of roaming, and because of so, he's not going to get so many levels. And level is so precious on the hero such as Lich, so you got to be fairly careful of what you level as your spell. If you start leveling Sacrifice still, he's going to have issue in terms of finding a level later on to start leveling Frost Armor when he actually needs it. So it's not a bad idea to actually start leveling Frost Armor at level 8, and then uh, start using it. Now, what distinguished from a really beginning Lich player and what Bad Boys is doing here is that he's actually leveling up the Frost Armor and he's using it. Yes, use your spells. I think that's that sounds like a really dumb move, but there's so many times I see Lich players just forget to use the Frost Armor. Frost Armor has a really low cooldown. You can say he's able to use it many times. I see a little bit of engagement going on. These guys should be very careful because the Radiant team has a long initiation range. They have the Ancient Aberration and Ice Blast. They have the Arrow from the Prodom. And they also have the Storm Surge that could constantly jump in. And I think the fact that they're staying in the mid lane is actually very dangerous for them. All they really need is one Ancient Aberration and Ice Blast to hit on uh, the Lich and the Cropolis. And they're going to be in big trouble. So I think they actually should stay back. But they really go on the offensive as well, looking for Genga, that's what I mean, Stormstone zips in right now, and where's the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, there we go, and you can see the positioning here, a Chain Frost does get dropped here, and I think he will get a kill, it's bounce, the Chain Frost is bouncing, and you can see that bad boy's got, grab himself a kill, but Stormstone goes in and grabs the kill as well. So I think a little bit of poor positioning here for uh, Lich here, but... Here comes a punch. Ooh, misses a hook with the haste rune, and he's gonna keep on chasing. But we don't really care about that. This is the lich. This is the lich video, so we're we're gonna focus on the lich. So I think personally, here, bad boys made a little bit of positional mistake. He stood really, really close. Uh, I guess he could. You could say that he was also baiting. He's basically saying, "Oh, you know what? I'm I'm so bad in position. Look at me. I'm right here. You guys could kill me." And that's called baiting. You put yourself on, on a bad position on purpose so that your teammates could get the kills. And you can see that, well, STWY got himself a couple kills. So I'm not sure whether he was baiting or not or what it was a truly a bad positioning. But at the end of the day, he, it made it work. Uh, it worked pretty nicely for them, even though you had to die. Not a big deal. As a support player, you can die a couple of times. Don't make a habit of dying and be like, oh, I'm a support. I'm justifying because I'm a support. Right, it's okay to die. It's, it's never really okay to die. But if you die and you grab your, your other heroes two or three kills in return, then that's a very successful bait. 
And you can see that Lich here is starting to make a, a part of the mechanism. Uh, he's got the headdress, he's got the buckler, and uh, these are pretty nice parts. I'm a little bit surprised that he actually has not upgraded his magic wand. It's actually not a big deal at all. Um, I mean, upgrading it to magic wand gives you 3 stats, and also gives you 5 extra charges uh, to, to hold. Uh, which can be a fairly decent deal, especially Lich for low HP hero. It's always good to have the extra burst healing, but it's it's not you know it's it's not end of the world that he did not upgrade it. I personally would have, but again, it's it's player preference, and that also allows him to get a quicker a quicker mechanism. And mechanism is a item that allows you to heal in the AOE. Uh, for I think 250 HP, it gives them extra armor to work with. It's generally it's it's probably one of the best supporting item in the game, and he's working towards that. He's about 900 go away, and if he grabs himself a couple kills, he he will get it. Right now the score is 8 to 15. I think we our friends here, a dire, are doing fairly good. Lich going back into the lane, and you can see that he's still using the uh, frost frost nova nova blast to to hit the creeps and and nuke the creeps. And I, normally I say that's okay, but look at his mana pool right now. Just imagine if the game is paused right now. Will he have mana if a, if a fight breaks out at, right at this moment? He would not have mana before he Dark Ritual the Creep. He would not have the mana to drop off a single Nova and also drop off the Chain Frost. So again, that's that's a huge deal for Lich. And like I want to re 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 reiterate time and time after again. If you don't have mana as a Lich, you're a big range creep. So Radiant team is going to counter by doing a little bit of pushing on the top lane. And I think our our diary team is a little bit slow on the teleport on the top lane, and I think they will end up losing this tower. Yeah, they're trying to make a go on it. Oh, tower gets taken off, and that's gonna be the end of the engagement. We do see a hero coming in from the left side. Can he do make anything happen? I think that's the pudge, but no, they're not gonna get anything going. And bad boy's still using his uh, mana to keep on Nuki, but that is okay as well. Also, just a heads up for you guys that are watching and still watching, I appreciate it. Um, I will, I might be skipping around, uh, jumping ahead sometimes, because some, I think there is a stage of the game where they're going to just run around for a long time and not do too much of anything, aside from, you know, trying to look for enemy heroes, and the enemy heroes are going to be trying to run away and whatnot. So, I will be doing a little bit of skipping, um, hopefully you guys don't mind. But uh, let's go back to the game right now. Um, yes, Lich level 10 right here, and you can see that his item set, he's working towards the mechanism, but um, you can see that he's also not buying wards, he's not really buying sentry wards to uh, try to gank the weaver, he's not buying any dust yet, he's not buying a observer ward to place down. And that will give them a little bit of a disadvantage in sight. You can see a Pudge not real as comfortable in terms of ganking because he really don't know where the enemy heroes are, he don't know what runes are to recharge his bottle. So he's going to have a tougher time because bad boys here is not buying wards. Uh, but we can't really always fault bad boys because, well, he's only support in this game. Um, uh, Crabless, I don't think he's playing the support role. And Anti-Mage and Alchemist definitely not playing the support role. So Crabless, or Lich is the only solo uh, support here. And to expect him to buy a, 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 a supportive item such as Mechanism and also get wards, it's, it's such a... It's a it's a big uh, pressure, so it, it, I guess it's okay that bad boys is not buying wards. I personally would have bought wards and not the mechanism. Um, again, it's a personal preference. It's not really a right or wrong decision. Having the mechanism and once he finishes, it's gonna be it's gonna add to their team so much more survival ability, and it, it's more of a long term investment. Um, but always uh, always consider if you're a support hero, you can actually buy the wards and put them down, and you know. Um, the one thing about buying wards is though that, like, buying wards, it's not a for sure thing. Like, buying wards does not give you a for sure chance of getting a kill. Buying wards does not give you a for sure chance of surviving from a gank. But buying mechanism is a for sure healing for 250 in AoE. So, it's kind of a, a risky move, and also mechanism is going to stay with you throughout the rest of the game, whereas wards time out after a while. So, it's, it's definitely a choice. Again, Look at his mana pool, 333. The team fight breaks out right now. Will he have the mana? He does, but after taking a a uh, dark ritual. But again, constantly keep track of your mana. If that team fight broke out in the jungle or something like that, where he did not have the uh, mana pool, or he did not have the chance to dark ritual, then hey, he is gonna be in a little bit of trouble. So I'm gonna start doing a little bit of time skip here, as we are moving towards the stage of the game where they are kind of just. Running around and not doing too much. I hope we don't have a fight breaking out right at this moment. Oh, maybe we will. 
No, it looks like we're fine. I actually did watch this replay once before I actually started uh, commentating this. Um, I watched this a couple of days back. Hopefully, it's still fresh in my mind. So I got a little bit things marked down. Skip to 25 minutes because apparently nothing happens till then. And you can say, "Ooh, nicely done here." Uh, Lich purchased a smoke of the seat. Not smoke of the seat. Sorry, uh, a dust of appearance, and that's uh, gotten for the Weaver. Now, Genki and Weaver. Sometimes it's okay to get a uh, dust of appearance. I personally would prefer sentry wards um, because Weaver's time lapse will debuff. Uh, so that means that if you if you pop your dust of appearance and the Weaver uses his time lapse, your dust of appearance buff goes away. So that's a little bit unfortunate. However, if you put down the sentry ward, no matter what he does, no matter if your time lapse, the sentry ward will still reveal him. So it's just my personal preference. Um, I, I think I, I really think Central Ward is a little bit better though. Dark Ritual by uh, or Sacrifice by Bad Boys here is still leveling up. And uh, you can see that he's still leveling up Frost Armor as it goes. So of course, take your ultimate spell whenever he can. So it really scales in the game really nicely. And also, um, he's getting a healthy amount of level. I just don't like the fact he's nuking creeps, but it's. It's okay. It's okay. Now, as I, I think so far in the game, right? Twenty-five minute in the game. I think. Ooh, I think he's really being out of position. And pause the game right now. We're being out of position. We can't really even call this a bait anymore because if you look at the mini map, there's no one really nearby. All his teammates are outside. And again, normally in in a situation like this, you could say, well, he's it's okay. He's not really getting ganked. But keep in mind who you're facing him against. You're facing him against a storm spirit. You're facing him up against a priestess of the moon and also an ancient apparition uh, ice blast. You never really know where they're going to be coming in so i he didn't die here but the the probability of death is is fairly high against this lineups and you got to be always always really careful and it's like butcher and the lich really brave and going into the enemy territory they they're doing this blind they don't have wards down they don't have anything down and I think, yeah, Storm Spirit coming in from the left right now. And you can see that they're being harassed upon. And they're going to be in trouble. Lich pulling ahead a little bit. And he is actually going to, yeah, he's for sure going to go down here. And Viper going to work here with the cold feet on him. He's going to get frozen. He doesn't even drop off his spell before he dies. And you can see that's exactly what I mean by out of position. You never know when the enemy team will come in. STWY uh, being chased down by the Butcher as well. Can he make it out alive? No. Cold feet is going to stun him. STWY dies. A double kill going into the Radiant team. Not a game-changing move per se, but it's it's you know throwing away the advantage that you don't want to throw away. So a little bit of engagement, but yeah, gonna focus about on the lich play. So uh, earlier I was trying to say that well we are 25 minutes 20 now 26 minutes in the game. We're definitely out of the laning stage. You can see that his item build or his skill build is reflecting that he has stopped getting sacrifice and he has started getting frost armor. Uh, we're moving towards a stage in the game where. Um, where team fights and small or, or more more bigger bigger scale engagement matters, and towards this stage of the game, Lich, what he has to do best is to hide, hide in the back lines, keep everyone frost armor up. Which, by the way, kudos shout out to Bad Boys. He's still he's constantly frost armoring himself and also his teammates up, and that's a very very again that distinguish between new new uh, new Lich players and uh, someone that knows how to play Lich, Lich decently. Frost armor on himself, great. And also at this stage of the game, you have to stay back, especially against Storm Surge, especially against uh, against the Marana. Right after you finish your mecha, you give your team two important tasks, uh, two important advantage. You give your team a huge burst of nukes of that chain frost. You give your team a mechanism, which is an AOE heal. But if you die before the team fight even begins, if the enemy te team is smart, they would jump in, kill the lich before the team fight even breaks out. And then suddenly your team is going to be in a 4v5 situation without your AOE heal, without one of the best ultimate in the game, and that's never a good thing. Again, you can see that he's, well, keeping his mana pool. No, now, with the level 11 ultimate, you can see that he does not have enough mana to do both spells. I keep pointing it out, and there's going to be one instance in this game where he goes into the team fight and he did not have chain, mana for the chain for us, and that's going to be a little bit of issue. But anyways, yes, working at this stage of the game now, he, he just picked up his mechanism. And with the mechanism picked up as well, that's even more strain on his mana pool. Because mechanism does take, I think, 150 mana to use it as well. So really, it's straining Lich's mana pool. He doesn't have too high of a stats gain. You can see, well, he's level 12, only 910 HP, only 763 mana. A lot of his mana has gotten through sacrifice. But again, if a team fight breaks out in the jungle or in the river, there's no creeps for you to instantly deny. So, 
So again, Lich constantly have to keep his mana pool high. And uh, I, I feel like I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's a very, very important thing in terms of playing Lich. But anyways, as I was saying earlier, it's really important in, in, for Lich in this stage of the game to not be out of position. And to a more newer player, well, what, what does actually that mean, right? Not be out of position. What does in position mean, right? For Lich, being in the correct position means, well, you're staying back. You don't actually let the enemy team see where you are. You're kind of playing like an absolute ninja. You don't let them know see where you are. And as soon as they jump in, you greet them with the chain frost. That's how you play Lich. And let's see how bad boy is gonna do in this department. I feel like in the laning stage he has done decently. He, he died uh, once or twice against the Weaver. He wasn't able to really keep Weaver down from farming. But I think overall he did a decent job. He tried his best to keep the anti mage farming. Anti mage really got out harassed. There's really nothing too much that Lich could have done. I think in the laning stage he could have done a little bit more physical harassment as well. I think he mostly stayed back, but that's okay. Again, he's, he's he was up against two ranged heroes. We see a hook. Ooh, barely misses. I don't think Ja 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 was paying attention attention because or ha 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 uh because he needs a little bit of trouble here so nova drops off and pause pause right here can i pause can i pause i need a pause he nova right here and did not have mana for chain frost you can see that there's two enemy heroes here ja 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 ja, ja or storm spirit and also the viper if there was a chain frost here this would be a successful team fight for the dire team unfortunately there was no t no chain frost up pudge dies Bad boys will fall down as well. Weaver, Weaver comes in and looks like Alchemist decides to feed as well. So that was a 3 for nothing chain fight. It looks like Krabless in trouble as well. F a 4 for team team a 4 for 2 team fight. And Team H comes in trying to get a kill. It looks like he is going to get a kill on the Priestess. No, Priestess leaps out and decides to run into tower range. Cool move there. So that was a 4 for 3 exchange. It could have gone a lot worse and it definitely would have gone. It is, is a pretty bad team fight overall. And I'm sorry to say it, I'm sorry to say it to this to my friend, but it, it's because of bad boys miss mana management. Did not have the mana for that team fight, and they lost themselves. A big lead, in my opinion. Scores 19 and 17, they're still leading it by a couple kills, but I think he could have been a lot more head in this situation. So, a little bit of a playstyle mistake by bad boys, but again, it's, it's okay. I mean, this is kind of what I mean by, hey, this is a beginner player, this is kind of a... A, a replay dedicated towards newer player. If you see perfect lich play, well, go watch a professional replay. This, we're not we're not here to say, well, bad boys, you suck for not mana management. That's that's not what we're here for. And I hope I hope that we don't see any of that in the comment section. So now we're talking about the uh, the skill or the item build of the lich. You can see that he's gone for mechanism. He has not upgraded for his boots. He has not upgraded his magic wand. And I think Lich is one of those heroes that is so flexible in his item build that you don't really have a set item build. Um, overall, he basically gets whatever his team needs. If his team needs well, wards, he will get wards. If his team needs a mechanism, he'll get the mechanism. If his team needs dust of appearance, he will get dust of appearance. And that's the benefit of playing Lich because he's so dis spell dependent, he really only cares about having ex experience points. So he he's getting the ex experience points as well. You can see that he's max frost armor, he's got a decent level of chain frost, and he's got a healthy level overall. Looks like we have a little bit of engagement here. Storm Strait need to zip out. I think he is. Yeah, he's gonna be fine. Oh, Lich, don't pull ahead, man. You don't want to mess with the enemy team. Again, positioning is key. Lich, in general, stays back. But anyways, I was talking about the item uh, progression for a Lich friend here. And Lich, overall, he he will get whatever his team needs. I think getting a mechanism overall here is okay. It's not. It's not great in my opinion because there's the ancient apparition ice blast on the enemy team what ancient apparition ice blast does is it hurts your team slowly but also it prevents regeneration for like 12 seconds so that is going to hurt the mechanism a lot also like i pointed out earlier mechanism takes 150 mana and again mana pool so precious mana is like water for lich on a desert and that might sound really odd considering that you have sacrifice but as we've seen time and time again, uh, mana is a, a key thing for, for Lich. So having the mechanism to really strain his mana pool against the Ancient Apparition, it, it's, a, it's a great item, but I'm not too sure whether it's the perfect item here. Uh, there's some uh, other item uh, consideration item that I personally would favor as they're going to walk uphill. We're going to see two people in the fog. And I don't know what Radiant Team is going to do, be doing because there's a Chain Frost. You can see how easily the Chain Frost is going to win a team fight. It, it is a game-breaking ultimate if used in those occasions like this. With no enemy creeps nearby, Bad Boy scores himself or scores his teammates a couple kills. And hey, that's exactly how you play Lich.
So anyways, back to the item discussion here of the mechanism. I think mechanism overall is a decent choice, but I, I personally would have upgraded boots. Um, I would have upgraded to phase boots to move a little bit quicker. Ooh. Did he hook something? Oh, he hooked the weaver. Nicely done. But looks like the uh, dust appearance being used by uh, bad boys here. Not finding anyone, but that's okay. I personally have would have upgraded to phase boots to move a little bit quicker. And the reason for doing so is, well, well there's a storm surge on the enemy end. There's a lot of slows from the ancient apparition ice vortex. There is a, a viper on the enemy team. They are really quick with Sakuchi and leap. So having extra mo mobility also good. Um, if you're not really, um, you don't really like to use, you know, extra hotkeys and whatnot on your inventory then go for a strength treads you know allows you to get extra um hp which is not not bad you can see that right now level 13 33 34 minutes in the game lich is only holding on to about 900 hp he's very easily nuked down and again lich the most important thing for lich is to stay alive and use his chain frost so if if you have the extra hp to save a life and then drop the chain frost before you die then you know that that strength trust will pay for itself as we see storm Surge zips him right now focus on the anti mage but he's really in a bad position gets silenced gets nuked down by bad boys here bad boys will have his mechanism he could actually pop at any he wants right here especially that ancient aberration ice blast debuff wasn't on him and they're gonna just power down this tower here uh, so yeah there's a mecha being used and they're gonna turn back now so anyways yeah so mechanism pretty good I I would maybe get strain treads to get a little bit of extra HP um, but I honestly I think the item that I will be building is gonna be uh, Django of Endurance um, because the build up is so nice the bracer is gonna give really nice HP for the Lich to work with um, the Rope of Magi is gonna help out his mana pool a little bit and also the Django of Endurance gonna give your team a huge um, burst of movement speed and also attack speed to you know either escape or catch up against the Storm Surf, Viper, um, Weaver, Priestess and whatnot so but um, and of course it's gonna make Lich a little bit sturdier overall. Uh, the cost is about the same to to the uh, Mecha. The final product I believe Mecha is still a little bit better, but I think the buildup um, is is what makes Django so nice, and that I, I personally like that. Also, you could consider getting a four staff in this case here, considering that well again the enemy team is very mobile. And uh, having a little bit of extra mobility that the four staff will grant you is not bad. Of course, four staff is an intelligence item, so it gives you extra mana pool to work with as well. So I personally favor getting a little bit more uh, stats. That's kind of my thing. I, that's again a personal preference. Um, you can see that Mecha is working nicely for, for over here. He's keeping his teammates alive. Um, he's he's constantly getting some HP regen and whatnot. So it, it's not bad. Now you can see that at level 13 and 14 has gone back leveling up Sacrifice and I think for the first time today as he po purchased a point booster, I'll talk about this in a bit. For the first time in, in this game, I'm going to start to disagree with bad boy skill build because yes, leveling Sacrifice is nice because now every time he eats a creep, he's basically, you can see that his mana pool is constantly full at this point. It's great. He's, he's going to keep himself, his mana pool really, really high. He could actually afford to new creeps for fun now because he has a Sacrifice to kind of refill it. Um, but I, I, like I said, Sacrifice is the laning spell and, if, and the fact that I think you're out of lane that you don't really need to have the lower cooldown of the Sacrifice, you don't really need to deny creeps experience anymore as we see we might see a big engagement breaking out here, both teams really in the ne nearby vicinity, we have 5 guys here for the Dire team, only 4 for the Radiant and uh well look, looks like both teams is scattering around i'll talk about his skill build in a bit crab is running out ahead this is what we call bad positioning or bait the entire radiant team is clumping up and a swarm is going to hit everyone ancient aberration ice blast is going to come in they got to be very careful arrow hits and it's going to be on the uh, alchemist storm says zips in right now where's the ancient aberration ice blast flying in it's going to hit on the lich lich cannot mecha oh lich mecha i think he, that was a little bit too late i think the ice chain ice blast did hit chain frost was bouncing but you can see he was bouncing on a lot of creeps and lich walking right back into a team fight he gets immediately nuked down and he makes in a little bit of trouble and pudge trying to make it alive storm so it stays alive it's right now a four for one team fight and if you're no new to dota or dota 2 in general that team fight might have been really like what the heck just happened and that's okay if you're getting really confused that's fine you, this is why the good thing is on youtube you can rewind it and watch it but basically what happened in that last team fight is the, the entire diary team they clumped up so they took a swarm they took an arrow in the face the ancient apparition ice blast is what really killed them because well once that was popped 
Lich was not able to pop the, the mecha and whatnot. And also, ooh, as we see, Storm says zips him right now. Pudge is going to eat right on him, but there's, he's going to take an arrow. Yeah, there's an arrow from the Priestess. And I think, yeah, he did get this kill on the Storm, but I think Butcher is going to end up going down. Yeah, Butcher denies himself with this rot, though. That's pretty nice. Gems on the ground. But anyways, what happened in the previous team fight in the mid river was uh, the entire diary team they clumped up. The ancient apparition ice blast hit them, and also unfortunately for a lich friend, there there were about a billion enemy creeps. Uh, so the chain frost, I don't think it balanced a lot on the enemy heroes. Um, so his chain frost ultimately did not do too much damage, and uh, I think. As a Lich player, generally after you drop your Chain Frost and after you see that your Monopole is starting to get lower, I think it's okay for you to leave the fight. Um, if you're in a very healthy HP pool and if your teammates are winning the fight, then stay around. Stay around and try to chase out a couple of heroes. But after you drop your Chain Frost, I personally believe your job is mostly done. Um, Again, if you're winning the team fight or if your your carry is in desperate need of a slow, then go back in by by all means. Even if you have to sacrifice your own life, make sure your carry makes it out alive, because in this stage of the game, uh, a support losing his life is not near not nearly as important as carry losing their life. But um, I I think uh, neither neither was the case earlier. Bad boys just kind of dropped the chain frost and were like, ooh, I don't know what to do now. And I'm just gonna run back in and feed. Um, I think that was a little bit of a mistake, but. Would I change a big out course of a game? Not, nah. I can't say for sure what I will. So it's not that ga big game, not that big of a uh, game changing mistake. So it's okay. It's okay. Now let's talk about talk about the skill build because I was saying that I, I disagree with the skill build here. Um, I I don't really think you really need a max your sac uh, sacrifice at this point here. You're gonna be out of the lane most of the time. I think it's more important to get more stats in general. Again, I'm I'm in love with stats because stats is what gives you is what makes you survive. Is what gets you more mana pool in general. I'm much rather having a big, uh, bigger raw HP pool, bigger raw mana pool than having extra level of sacrifice. So I, I personally would have started leveling up stats instead of uh, maxing my sacrifice, and I wouldn't have uh, even touched my sacrifice until if I'm hitting level 24 and 25. So that's my my personal preference. Um, I don't think it would it, again. It won't matter. Uh, if the game is lost or won, it won't be like, oh man, it's because he level up sacrifice. There's, it's not a huge game impact, game changing move. As we see, ooh, ja, 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 ja. being chased by like three or four, he's gonna take a nuke to the face. I think if Alchemist, no, Alchemist gets stunned, good fogged by ja, 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 ja. And he's gonna make it out. I think Alchem Alchemist made a mistake. He he really was greedy and he wanted to wait for like the five second stun. He should have just lobbed it out whenever. But Weaver. Gets owned by a gem. I think there's a gem on our butcher here, so his invisibility not saving him. So um, that's the thing that I don't agree with uh, uh, Bad Boy's skill build, but it, it's okay. It's it's not a big deal. And now you can see that again. Going back to what I said about um, Lich's really ooh, what what the heck is Bad Boy doing here? Is he gonna solo the Roshan? No, his teammate's coming in. Okay. Um, anyways, um, like I said earlier, Lich is a fairly um, item. He's a very versatile hero in terms of getting whatever item he wants to get. So it looks like he has opted for point booster, and I like this because it gives him more HP to work with. It gives him more HP, uh, mana to work with. And top lane's gonna. Storm Surge gonna die. Uh, sorry, I was saying that point booster allows him and gives him more HP and mana to work with. And also, you have the choice to upgrade it to an Agamem Scepter later on. Agamem Scepter will increase your ultimate by a huge ton. However, I personally don't really like Ackerman Scepter on Lich. Um, simply for the reason, well, if you saw in the previous team fight in the middle river, yeah, it's going to increase your nuke damage by a lot for your chain frost, but you can see that a lot of those bounces were on creeps. And that's really nothing you can control. Like a lot of team fights, especially for tower pushes or team fight, basically past this point of the game, there's going to be a lot of creeps in, in, in the team fight. And unfortunately, it's a randomized bounce, so it's going to bounce crazily, and it's going to bounce on creeps. And having Agamemnon Scepter to upgrade the an ultimate that bounces on creeps, eh, I'm not sure whether I personally like that. Sure, it's going to make you tankier, though. So I like that. Um, it, it's going to give you a massive amount of HP. It's going to give you good stats to work with. And you can see that right now we have Aaron, uh, we have a bad boys getting up an observer ward, and he's going to be placing up on this is hill if he could. All right, there, there, there. No, 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 no. Okay, on the lich. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was saying that there's gonna be a lot of creeps in the team fight. So unfortunately, your chain for us is gonna bounce onto them. So, you know, I personally is not a big fan of getting 
uh, Agamemnon set up there on Lich, but it definitely has its use. It definitely has its use, especially let's say if we have a solo mid Lich, right? If you have a solo mid Lich where you are in a huge item, uh, huge item, and also in a uh, level advantage compared to the enemy team, getting Agamemnon set there is one of probably one of the most game breaking items there is because well. They are already really low in HP. Your Chain Frost does an F ton of damage. They're going to be even lower in HP. One, one and two Chain Frost are going to be dead. So that's that's where the benefit of getting uh, a really big Chain Frost is there. But I don't think this is going to be happening in this game. So just judging from how the team fight is happening. So personally, I would have getting a raw point booster is not bad overall as well because you could just get more HP. That's never a bad thing. Ooh, as arrow almost hit the lich, gotta be careful. I think lich in this position here should hide in the jungle. And this right jungle that he's hugging, he should hide into it. And now you can see, that again, swarm hitting like the whole freaking team, and they gotta just back off. If lich is hiding where the pudge is hiding right now, he could really just drop off a chain frost if they get initiated on right now. Radiant team is chasing into the jungle, and that's very dangerous because chain frost is gonna hurt. There's a chain frost is bouncing left and right, nothing on heroes. You can say he's not killing anyone, but he's doing so much damage. He's gonna survive as well. Mechanism is popped, and now this. Viper is gonna die for sure. I think Viper, can he make it out alive? Uh, I don't know what item he has. He's trying to TP out, but Nova's gonna find him. And yes, Alchemist gets a double kill. We have a buyback from the enemy team. But you can see that that's the difference between a Chain Frost hitting creeps and Chain Frost hitting heroes. It just makes your team fight so much smoother. Not only does it not only does it do an insane amount of damage, but also slows a hell of a ton. And right now we have the uh, Dire team chasing away the Priestess. I think that's a mistake. I think they should have taken this time and tried to push instead. But, oh! Meanwhile, if you're watching the minimap, I think Anti-Mage on the bot lane, he was pushing a tower as well. So they got themselves a couple of towers. And right now, despite the score being 24 to 28, you can see by where the team fights are happening, you can see that where the towers are taken, um, the Dire team is having a big advantage in this game. So, alright, going back to, ooh, looks like Bad Boy's going to TP out live. And also, I think maybe the Kroblis should be keeping out alive as well. So anyways, I was talking about Lich's point booster item build. He doesn't actually have to finish the point booster. Yeah, you can see that he's going back to a Bracer. Um, getting a point booster is it's not a bad thing. It gives you a decent amount of HP. Um, but let's say if you if you plan to buy a Bracer in the first place anyways, I would have got the Bracer first. I would upgrade it into Django of Endurance. Um, that would be pretty good. Uh, point booster is not bad though, so don't get me wrong. And then he's uh, buying a Gem True Sight for his Pudge. Nicely done. So really good supportive play here from Bad Boy so far. Um, let's see what other, what other item um, we could get. We could get an urn of shadows that's gonna allow you to heal your teammates a little bit more. I think Butcher might have got an urn shadow. He hasn't clicked on his friends for a bit. So let's let's take a peek here. Uh, we're not really supposed to, but let's take a peek. Butcher he does have an urn shadow, so it makes sense that Lich doesn't have one. Um, you could you, sometimes you might see medallion courage. So that, you know the the reason I'm discussing all this different really utility support item is because well Lich can get it. It doesn't really matter. I mean there's some cases where one item is a lot better than other cases, um, but for the most part Lich is a very versatile hero that he could get basically any item that he really wants to. Any support items. Let me reiterate. I don't don't start getting like a a radiance or you know a, you know. A, I don't know, a Mask of Man or something random like this. Get support items on the Lich and it's going to be helpful. As you see Lich being a little bit out of position, Chain Frost, and you can see that's what I mean. It's going to get dodged if um, if you don't cast it in the correct time. And now we have this, ooh, Hook is going to hook the Alchemist out. Alchemist may be stunning himself. Now he's going to drop it right now. But it looks like the the power of the uh, Diary Team is just almost overwhelming. They really, they're going to be healing at worst. Drop your mecha. Ooh, Ancient Apparition, Ice Blast. Drop it before you, yeah, there's a mecha being healed. Hook in for that uh, Weaver. Weaver is going to go down. And the team fight is going really nicely. 40 Diary Team, despite the Chain Frost not being there. So Aaron, or, or excuse me, Bad Boys here, not doing too much. Uh, but overall... Enough. He did enough in the early outs of the game that he doesn't need to do too much anymore. It's right now. It's his carry. Uh, it's his carry's. Uh, you know, it's their time to shine. It's their time to shine. So he doesn't really need to do too much in this case here. As long as he stays alive, drop a chain frost, drop a couple of slow, keep frost armor up on everyone. Uh, that's that's gonna be enough. And you can see again, he's still doing a good job. He's keeping frost armor up on the pudge. Uh, he sh well, you keep you know. I'm, I'm praising you right now. Keep a frost armor up. Come on, let's go. Well, he was keeping Frost Armor up on his Pudge and also on his Alchemist, who, by the way, have a lot of HP, but not so much armor. So keeping Frost Armor on them is going to be really, really important. Checking the item on our Alchemist. Alchemist, very, very unique item build. Let's just put it like that. Um, but again, this is a Lich, Lich uh, Learning Willumi series, so.
So yeah, un uh, from now to the end of this game, our, our friend Bad Boys is pretty much done. He's, he's going to be acting as a secondary nuker and helpful. He's going to be dropping frost armor. He's going to be healer. He he's, he's basically done. So um, hopefully by watching this this lich play, which by by no means is perfect, but I think it's it's decent. It's really good actually. Really decent lich play. He had he made a couple of mistakes I, I believe with the lack of mana management. I I don't agree with his item choice perfectly, but it's okay. I don't agree with the skill build perfectly but it's okay as well so what i want to really the final lesson i suppose to take away from from watching this video is to that there's there's no cookie cutter build i, I think you, sometimes you might come across a guide on play dota forums on reddit or something like that and it's going to tell you well you know get this item build this hero this way i think uh, maybe 80 percent of all dota heroes have a lot of versatility in them you could switch up item sets if need be you could switch up skill points if need be and to me, that's that's the true way to play Dota. You don't want to hammer yourself down into one build, because uh, well, heroes are made to be versatile. Heroes are made to be, uh, you know, game changing. So play it like so. Play it like so. And uh, right now we saw uh, bad boys here in this case, in this game, uh, showcase that well. There's you know some differences in terms of lich build and some differences in terms of item builds, and but that's okay. That's okay. All right. So. Um, I think the game is ending at this point. Um, there's not. Oh, well, okay. Well, let, let's let's watch it all the way to the end because um, let's watch how his remaining chain frost, how he's positioning. But um, and from now to the end of the game, I want to talk about. I, I feel like Lich is a more or less a defensive hero. Um, you can see that earlier when they're pushing the mid tower. Let me go into free camera over here so I could have a little bit of camera control earlier. Uh, what is Weaver doing, man? There's a gem on the main team. Anyways, earlier when there's a big, big team fight over here, right? You can see that Lich was offensively initiating with his Chain Frost, but the Chain Frost projectile is traveling. It, it's a slow projectile, traveling slowly, and you can see that as soon as the enemy team saw the Chain Frost was coming, they spread up. Lich, uh, the Viper was going this way, the Storm was going this way, and it hit the Viper once, and that was it. There, there was no bounces because the the projectile had nothing to search upon. So, for that reason. I feel like Lich is better as a defensive hero, and that's kind of like I said earlier in the game. You should get a TP scroll so that when your teams are diving past towers, you can TP in Chain Frost get a double kill. Um, anytime that you're initiating with Chain Frost, the projectile is just so slow that the enemy team could just run away. Of course, it can be byproduct of the fact that they have a Storm Spirit, and by the fact they have a, uh, uh, a Priestess, they could just leap away from the projectile very easily as well. But overall, I feel like Lich is better to have your team being initiated upon, and assume they're diving past their own creeps or diving really close to you, they're all clumped up. Anytime that the enemy team is initiating on onto one of your single hero, most likely they're clumped up. That is the time to say, whoa, what's up guys? Here's the Chain Frost. Um, anytime that they're running, anytime that you're chasing them, they're going to be more spread out. And that's why I personally believe Lich is a better off defensive hero when he's dropping his Chain Frost. You see how Lich is walking ahead. I think his position needs a little bit of work here. He's chasing really deeply. He's going on the offensive. Where's the Chain Frost? Chain Frost, again, unfortunately, not many bounces. In fact, any bounces, if I saw. And uh, playing a little bit more aggressive than need be. But okay, they're winning, so it doesn't really matter how he plays anymore. And right now, he's going to just take down this Rax. They're going to take down this Rax. And the game is pretty much done. So, yeah, the game is pretty much done. So, I'm going to pause the replay now. And we're gonna take a look at how bad boys it did in this game. So, two, five, and two, not the best score. Like this might look like a really bad score overall, but if you look at what he did for his team, right? He, of course, he gra he 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 laned against the weaver pretty much. Basically, kept his HP, uh, kept his level down. He kept nuking him. He ganked with the punch a lot. And for Lich, that's actually a really good thing to do. Um, he provides valuable slow. He had good chain frosts in team fight. Um, he slowed everyone down. He didn't even have too many assists. Um, that's a little bit of a surprising thing. He he kept frost armor up on everyone. He he played as a valuable support. Also, he doesn't have that many creep kills. You can see he's only got 37 creep kills. The lowest in his team is keeping everyone else farming. Um, so overall, he's got supportive item for his teammates. Um, I mean, this is a good lich game. So even though his score didn't show it, I feel like he was a valuable part of the team. So overall, lich played decently.
Okay, so now this after hopefully you guys stay all the way to the end, I will tell you guys how to how you guys can submit your replay to me in just a bit. But uh, I would like to take this chance to ask for a couple of feedback. Is there anything that you want me to talk more about? Um, Bad boys told me that he want me to focus on his positioning in this game and. Did I focus enough on his positioning? Was there anything else I should have focused on? Should I talk a little bit more about item builds? Should I talk a little bit more about skill builds? Um, tell me how I could fix the format of the show and uh, what what are some of the heroes that you're looking for? Do you want to submit a replay of yourself? You know, um, All that stuff, I'm really uh, welcoming the feedback. That would be really, really nice to have. And I believe that's it. So again, stay tuned if you want to have uh, your... If you want to know how you can submit your replays to me, but... If not, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, this is Luminous, signing off. See you guys. Okay, if you'd like to submit your Dota 2 replays, and yes, I'm only accepting Dota 2 replays, to me, here's what you should do. You go into, you down, basically you down your own replays. Um, you can search your own replay by using the filter command. So if I'm searching for myself, I'm searching for Luminous Studios, you know, and then you search it, you download the replay, after you download the replay, you have to go into your uh, C drive, your program file, and then it's going to be in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Dota 2 Beta, Dota. I I'll actually type out the entire string of what nested folder it's going to be in. But it's going to be in that folder. Um, it's going to look like a string of numbers, it's gonna like, you know, 58731, and it's going to be .dem. That's the file you're looking for. And then uh, you want to attach that file in an email to lumisofun at gmail.com. And within that uh, email, I would really appreciate it if you, in three to five sentences, not in an essay, but in a three to five sentences, tell me what you want me to talk about. Do you want me to talk about positioning? you want to talk about item sets? You know, just overall things like that. Uh, what are the stuff that you want me to look at? That's going to be, uh, I guess, number one. Number two, please... Don't I mean again? This, as you can saw, this was a pretty uh, this this series is geared towards newer players. So if you are a veteran Dota player, like there's there's no need to send me the replay for me to tell you how good you did. You you already know how how well you did by having a twenty eight zero and four game or something like that. You don't need to send me the replay. In fact, I won't even look at the replay if you did so well in the game because again, this is geared towards uh, newer players. So if if I actually prefer if you guys send me replays where you lost. Um, I actually believe that uh, in a game that you lost, you will learn a lot more than a game you won. So I'm looking for those replays being sent in. Um, and I think aside from that, I am done. Yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be looking for a lot of replays being sent to me. And uh, until then, this is Luminous signing off to you guys.